Today we're going to be analyzing a fully renovated eight unit apartment building in Cleveland. David from France, this is your video. Let's dive in. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. All right, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I am your host, James Wise, and today, we are analyzing an eight unit apartment building for my client, David. David from France. Now, David, you reached out to me. Um, more or less, it looks like you're trying to put roughly just a little bit over $600,000 into play here in Cleveland. Uh, you and I are currently under contract on another deal. And then you had sent me this deal to analyze for you. Essentially, uh, the story per our conversations behind this deal, the company is called Immobler Cleveland LLC. It is owned by uh, three investors from France who specialize in selling properties uh, here in Cleveland to people who live in France. Now, I have never heard of this company before, um, but the property they presented to you, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with that area. I, I know the area well. Uh, the property is 8208 Denison Avenue. I got it up here on the screen for you. Now, this is an eight-unit apartment building that these guys are offering to you for 229900 this isn't on the MLS, so anybody else that's watching this video. And David, uh, just so you know, right now as you're watching this, no one else can see this video. I've sent it to you in a private link, and I keep it private until your deal is done. I would not want anyone to uh, take your analysis and be able to like scooch in and, and snake the deal from you. But I do release all of these analysis products uh, publicly after your deal is gone. So everyone else uh, who's watching this, you're about 60 days late to the party. If you'd like one of your properties analyzed, go to HoltonWise.com, uh, go to HoltonWise TV, and click on the MLS uh, Search and Analysis Show uh, to schedule your analysis of your deal. I can analyze any deal. It doesn't have to be on the MLS. This one, it's not on the MLS. It's from some cats who, uh, uh, you know, they're French guys and they sell properties to French guys. That's what they do. I've never heard of them before, uh, but David brought me all the information they gave him. And uh, here I am analyzing it. Uh, so this is the property, eight unit apartment building. Um, and as far as uh, the rent roll goes, we are looking at a total of $3,800 a month. See, so we have four units that uh, are studios. So that means there's no bedroom, right? It's, it's essentially bathroom and then uh, kitchen and then like the living room, kitchen, bedroom. It's all one little open room. So you got four of those in there and uh, they're estimating to you that they're going to rent those at $425. You got three one-bedroom apartments and they're estimating that they're going to rent those at $500. And then to round it all out, you do have one two-bedroom unit which these guys are estimating is gonna rent for 600. So they're estimating that you're gonna be bringing in $3,800 a month or $45,600 a year. Now, uh, from what I'm looking at so far, you know, the purchase price, they're offering this to you, turnkey investment, they're gonna renovate the whole thing and we're gonna get into the scope of work here in a bit. Uh, but they're offering this to you at $229,900. That's a fair price. That's a very fair and reasonable price. Uh, so no red flags there. As far as this rent roll goes, I think this is a totally uh, realistic and fair rent roll. Uh, so two for two out of these guys. Never heard of this company before, uh, but what I'm looking at thus far, these guys appear to be stand up. Uh, they appear to be giving you nice, accurate information. Their price point, it's right in line with what I would expect a property like this to be listed for. Uh, so, so far, no red flags. Um, 
the neighborhood, just so you know, I don't, I don't know if they've mentioned this to you, but this neighborhood, I would consider this to be a D neighborhood, right? Uh, if you want, you can go to, uh, or you, you just Google it, actually. If you go to homewise.com, go to the tools and resource section, you'll find this there. But you could also just punch it into Google, the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. It's a comprehensive guide I made where I graded all the areas uh, in the Cleveland market A to F. Uh, currently, I consider this area to be a D-class area. Uh, so what you're going to see, you're going to see a little bit, uh, you know, more higher risk investments. But I think that's pretty obvious and reflective when we look at this rent roll, where you have a bunch of studios renting at four and a quarter, or the two bedroom renting at six, or the ones at five. Um, everything they've portrayed to you is pretty accurate. Honestly, it might even be a little low. What uh, I think you could do, because they're renovating this building, uh, I think this would be a really, really good candidate for Section Eight. Uh, another thing too, just so you know, you go to HoltonWise.com. I'll pull this up on the screen for you. Uh, you go to our FAC here, okay? And you go right here. This is our FAC for property management clients. And up top here, we got link right there. And then there's another link down there uh, when you're like cruising through the FAC. But we have a whole FAC uh, for Section 8. And uh, I, I think this would probably be a, pr a pretty damn good candidate for the Section 8 program. Now, I asked you uh, in our correspondence if these guys were planning on filling the building with Section 8 tenants, and you said they were not, which makes sense because Section 8 uh, is a pain in the ass to deal with for property managers. Um, so I'm not trying to, like, change the deal here. Like, sounds like these guys kind of know what they're doing, right? Sounds like everything I presented to you is fair and reasonable. They've presented you fair and reasonable estimates. But I, I do think that there's a little bit more meat on the bone here. Like if you go down here, this is a chart, which is what CMHA, uh, it's, you could use this to like estimate what CMHA will pay. And you take your zero bedroom units, CMHA's payment standard 667, HUD considers fair market rents to be 607. Now they've estimated the rent at four and a quarter. Now, just because this chart says 607 or 667 does not guarantee that you're going to get 607 or 667 from CMHA from those units. CMHA is going to make you a rent offer. Now, typically that rent offer is higher than the cash paying tenants are paying in those neighborhoods, but they do uh, take comps into account of what other people are paying. Um, in the tenants, you know, every tenant's got something a little differently. The CMHA Section 8 program, they want the tenant to spend roughly 30% of their money on their rent payment. Now, some tenants don't have any income, so CMHA is going to cover 100% of their rent. So it's going to vary. There's a whole lot of red tape of how you get to the rental amount, how much of it is paid by Section 8 versus paid by the tenant, and then what exactly it's going to be. You kind of have to go through a big, long process where you're already tied in to Section 8 for that unit, and they're already going in and out of your unit, inspecting your unit. Uh, so that's why a lot of people avoid it. But if you can plow through it, get through the, the whole end of it, you could ultimately end up with a rental amount that's higher. Uh, I, again, I can't guarantee you're going to hit the $607 mark or the $667 mark here for those studios, but I would anticipate you'll hit higher than four and a quarter for the studios if you go the Section 8 route. Um, and then the rest of this fact, it's all about Section 8. This entire page is just all Section 8 stuff. Holton Wise, we manage your assets and we manage them through Section 8 uh, or cash. Um, I think their cash estimates are right on the money. Section 8, again, I think is a little higher. So you have some upside here. I'm going to, I gave you all the rental amounts that they gave you, but again, I, I think you could probably be closer to that 600 bucks a month range if you want Section 8 in the studios. As far as the one bedrooms, they're estimating 500. Section 8, uh, HUD and CMHA. By the way, CMHA is the housing authority that runs the Section 8 program in the Cleveland market. Depending on like where you are, there's going to be different housing authorities, um, if you're wondering what that is. And that's also in the fact. But the one bedrooms, they're estimating at 500. One bedroom vouchers here, 725, 795. I don't think you're going to hit that number. I think it'll be lower, but I think it'll probably be at least, maybe at least in the 600s for those ones. And then the two bedroom vouchers, they're estimating 600 for the cash paying tenants. Here you're looking at 892, uh, 981. I've never hit 981 uh, at any of my Section 8 two bedroom apartments. Uh, I have one apartment building pretty close to this. It's on Montclair. Uh, <clears throat> it's probably like a five minute drive. Uh, your building here on Dennis, this building here on Dennis, into my eight unit apartment on Montclair. Um, 
five minute drive. We used to rent those two bedroom apartments for like fucking, I think when we bought the building, the old owner was renting those motherfuckers for four ninety five. We increased the rents up as we ran them for a couple years, cash paying tenants up to like five fifty, five seventy five. I think we got close to six hundred on a couple of them. And then when we started doing section eight at that building, I think the last two or three units we rented, uh, we rented them all at seven forty five. So those two bedroom units, we rented them all at seven forty five. So here you see eight ninety two, nine eighty one. We didn't hit those numbers, but obviously seven forty five is a lot better. Uh, then like the, I think it was like 600, 595, 600 or somewhere in there. You know, we kind of just like slowly crept it up. Uh, we ran that thing all cash for like probably f three or four years before we started doing Section 8 there. So we, we crept it up. But again, the original dude was like running out of like 495, like super fucking low. Uh, so that's just to give you a little taste of like the potential upside here above and beyond what these guys have uh, laid out for you. Again, I think these guys are being very transparent and very conservative. So I, I like these sellers from, from what I'm seeing so far. So just using their numbers, 3800 a month, 45600 a year. Now, as far as expenses and all that jazz, if the building is like totally renovated and all you got to do is maintain it, how is that 45600 going to break out? How much money are you going to make on that? So you got to take repairs, vacancy, and capital expenditure. I always, for properties like this, I always estimate about 5% uh, of the rent. So $190 a month, taxes. Now, this is something I want you to see. If you're buying a property in Cuyahoga County, you go to the Cuyahoga County Tax Auditor, okay? And it'll show you what they're valuing the building at. Uh, and you already knew this. They, they, these guys, they purchased this building in a totally messed up state. They bought it for like a hundred grand, or nope. Per your email, they bought it for ninety-five. Okay, so they bought it for ninety-five, and the market value is right there. Sure enough, uh, the county values this building at ninety-one thousand five hundred. All messed up. So these taxes, currently right now, thirty-two oh nine seventy-two. Um, I like to run the numbers based on what the building is like currently at when I do these analysis for you. So like I'm gonna, I use their income, right? Even though I think there's a way you can make considerably more income. So when I uh, give you this tax number estimate, I just use 3000, which is just a ballpark of what it is currently because it's not super important right now because that will change. I don't know when exactly it will change, but the county is gonna look at your tax, uh, rate when what they uh you know value the building at they're going to look at the last purchase price so here ninety one thousand five hundred. so just using like basically what they have i just penciled in 3k or 250 a month uh, on this chart so you can get an idea of your noi right now but note that next time the county is auditing this stuff they're probably going to more than double it so it's 250 a month right now that could probably increase in the near future in the next one to two years definitely uh, that should increase to over 500. I would assume your annual taxes should be around six, maybe 6,500. So bear that in mind. That's going to go up for right now. Let's just pencil in an estimate close to what they got. 3K, 250 a month. Insurance, all my six unit, eight unit buildings in this general price range, they cost me about 200 bucks a month. So I penciled that in. Uh, your water sewer. Now, normally I estimate 75 bucks a month per unit. Uh, but for this one, you have four studios, right? So obviously studios are gonna have way less people living in them uh, over the long haul than two bedroom apartments would. So I chopped that in half for the other three. So I did 75 times four and then 35 uh, for the other four units. So I'm estimating 440 bucks a month uh, for your water sewer. Water sewer, very, very difficult to estimate. If you go back to the Holton Wise FAC here, um, a lot of owners try to do uh, things where they install like sub metering and to try to get away from paying for the water and sewer here in Cleveland. It doesn't work. None of it works. The way the laws are written here in Ohio, uh, the landlord tenant laws, and then the way that the water company is set up, you as owners have to pay the water sewer at all times. Right here in my fact is a gigantic. Uh, write up explaining that so go to the fact if you're curious i don't want to burn up daylight here because i swear to god i answer this question for 
people over and over and over. Uh, drives me batty after a while, but moral of the story, if you want to be a real estate investor who invests in Cleveland, you want to be a landlord who invests in Cleveland, you're paying water sewer and a story. Um, so the estimate there, we're going to go 440 and then check out my fact. If you want to know why, that's the end of the story. Uh, lawn care. So like if you're going to have Holton Wise managers, we charge about 33 a cut. You're going to have to cut this lawn probably 16 times throughout the year. We don't have to cut in the winter, but you know, we got to get the crew out. Obviously it's small, but remember you're, you're paying for the truck to come to your property, right? The fact that this is really, really tiny versus like a regular yard, which is in Cleveland, which would be like maybe three or four times this big. Uh, you're not paying for the guy to go back and forth with the mower. You're paying for the truck and the crew to get out there. So you're looking at a total cost for the year, 528 or averaged out 44 a month, even though, again, we're not cutting all 12 months. We're cutting about 16 times at 33 a cut. Uh, last thing you should anticipate, property management, right? You're, you're located in France. Obviously, you can't manage this yourself. You're in France. That wouldn't make any damn sense. Uh, so you're looking at about 380 a month. So all told... Uh, using their their rental estimates, which I think are conservative, I think they're kind of low, because uh, I, I really think you should go Section 8 on this property, by the way. Um, it's D-class asset, right? Now, I do like this neighborhood. It's my favorite D-class neighborhood in Cleveland because it is actually close to some other stuff that's happening. I'll put a link to this in the show notes, uh, but there's a hospital very, very close. It's called Metro Health. Metro's committed to putting a billion dollars in the neighborhood. On top of that, you know, if you hear about Cleveland, there's some like, you know, trendy, fancy, nice neighborhoods. Ohio City, Gordon Square, Tremont. So like nationally, a lot of people are calling Cleveland like a comeback kid, a tech resurgence, all kinds of like cool stuff happening in Cleveland. And the majority of the time they're talking about those neighborhoods, Ohio City, Tremont, Gordon Square. Where this neighborhood is located, you are literally bordering all three of those neighborhoods. So of all the D-class neighborhoods, if you're looking like long term, I think based on the location of this neighborhood, this has got the best shot, in my opinion, to start seeing gentrification. Now today, right now, still D-class, which is why I think it's very important, you go the Section 8 route, increase the money coming in on the top end, decrease the expenses, decrease your turnovers and all that bullshit. Um, but utilizing the expenses we just laid out here, and remember, down the road, just like I think down the road, you should increase those rents by going Section 8, you're going to have to increase what you're paying in property taxes by at least double because you're probably going to pay $229 for this asset, not the, uh, what was it, 90, 91500 that the county's got it, at, got it at right now. So all that in mind, total expenses on average, $1,884 or every year on average. Again, it's not going to be like this every year. Some years are up, some years are down. You might have up, 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 down, 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 down. That's the nature of the beast, especially working with D-class assets. But realistically, I think you should anticipate spending $22,608 based on current numbers. So scheduled to bring in $45,600 for the year, spend $22,608. That's going to leave you with a net profit at the end of the day, $22,492. Not bad, right? If you break that down further, if you were to purchase the property at $229,000, your NOI, 22992 that is a 10 cap, right? They're, you know, probably, I don't know what they advertised uh, the cap rate to you, but more or less, I think you're bringing in a net cap of 10. Now, uh, usually in this part of the show, I start talking about like cash on cash return if you utilize a mortgage. Uh, and what your net cash flow after paying off the mortgage uh, is going to be. I'm a big proponent of using uh, financing, but you are not going to be able to finance this asset, I'm pretty sure. I'm fairly confident you're going to be just paying cash. So we're not even going to get into that. And there's two big reasons for that. The first one is you yourself, okay? Uh, you uh, are not a U.S. citizen. You live in France. It is very hard to find a bank in France who's willing to loan someone money on a property out here in the U.S. You know, they want to loan money on properties in France. So that's tough. Uh, you being in France, it's very, very hard to find a lender here in America that is willing to loan to someone who's outside of America. So you have that working against you. So for that reason alone, you're probably going to have to get into a property like this cash. The second reason is your sellers bought a completely non-performing asset and they're totally renovating it, right? They're putting the whole thing together. So 
what that means is there is no historical uh, profit and loss on this property, right? It's a completely blank slate. So when lenders, commercial lenders, when they write loans on these properties, what they do is they value the income coming in. They look at them as uh, performing businesses. Essentially, you've got a debt service coverage ratio that banks like to hit. Typically, I see they want to lend out a dollar for every dollar twenty that comes in. But uh, they want to use actual historical records, not just leases, not just projections. They want to see actual Schedule E's from previous ownership, which you don't have here. These guys, they bought a blank slate. Uh, so you being out of the country, that's, that's one reason you're probably going to have to pick cash. Number two is that. So for you, it's a very, very simple deal, right? It's just straight up you're investing $229,900, and you're going to essentially return 10% on your money. That's pretty much it. Now the question is, What's the quality of their rehab? Because as of right now, that price point for a fully renovated uh, eight-unit apartment building in this neighborhood, that's great. Uh, I just ran the numbers for you on what you can expect if you got a renovated property in this area. These are just like your cost to maintain it. Also great. Everything looks good so far. The question is, uh, are these guys going to set you up in is your renovation going to be high quality? So that's the question though, right? That's the million dollar question. Is the work that these guys do, is it going to be high quality? Are they going to do the proper renovations to this beat down old building to allow you to simply maintain it and to hit the numbers that we just discussed? Are they going to set you up to put you in a position to where you can pick it up at 229 dollars don't need to worry about any major renovations and you are able to easily earn that 10% return on your money. That's what I want to get in with you next. So quickly, I'm going to go to a word from the sponsor of today's video and then we're going to get into all that information. Expanding your real estate holdings to multiple markets is a great way to reduce your risk. Birmingham, Alabama features an unemployment rate that is well below the national average. In fact, Birmingham's growing tech scene has been highlighted by both Fords and Barons. That, coupled with Birmingham's low price to rent ratio, is why so many investors from around the U.S. have been flocking to the area to put their money to work. Spartan Invest has helped hundreds of investors successfully buy cash flowing real estate in Birmingham. With an average tenant stay of 39 months, it's easy to see why Spartan Invest maintains an annual occupancy rate above 95%. To learn more about the turnkey opportunities in Birmingham, Alabama, contact Spartan Invest today at 205-202-4118 or visit them online at spartaninvest.com. Holton Wise has a worldwide audience of real estate investors. If you are a lender, home inspector, or anyone else with a real estate related business who would like to increase your sales and exposure with an ad in one of our videos, go to holtonwise.com today. All right, Dave, welcome back. Um, so yeah, let's get into the renovation. Now you sent me a lot of the stuff that they sent you, including the scope of work. Let me pull up that email. Now, you sent me this scope of work like as a screenshot from them, so I don't know if it's going to appear to be blurry on the screen when I make it bigger here for you to actually see on the screen. It might look a little blurry. I'm going to read it off of this screen. It's a little clearer for me here. Uh, so it looks like they want to do it in three phases. Okay, The first phase is structural. They want to complete the roof repairs, uh, roughly 25 square foot of torch down rolled roof to ensure no leaks, add several support beams to the affected areas of the building, uh, sister approximately 23 broken or damaged floor joists and either split in two or cracking, that are, oh, that are either split in two or cracking under the weight of the building. Uh, this is the most important part of the rehab due to the safety and possible collapse of the upper floors. This should correct the leaning floors in the bathroom and kitchens or at least stop them from getting any worse. And then we kind of go on to phase two here where they talked about your mechanical. So they want to do full electrical. They want to run electrical through the entire building, which is nice. You know, uh, so they'll have like full on electrical, uh, the plumbing. 
Looks like, you know, all the hot water tanks, those are all going to be brand new. All the copper plumbing in the property was stolen, which, you know, that's par for the course in a neighborhood like this. Uh, hopefully when they rerun all the plumbing, they don't do copper again. I'd like to see them do PEX for you. Uh, a lot less likely to have theft after that. And then uh, in their third phase, they start getting into the cosmetics, right? They're just doing kitchens, baths, common areas, stuff like that, making the units look presentable. Um, looks like these guys, they use agreeable gray, which is nice. That's the color we use here. The biggest takeaway that I have from their renovation plan, which all of it seems pretty reasonable, is what they're doing on the roof though, right? Now this is a, a torch down roof, okay? This building, what I wrote on my notes here, this building was built in 1920. It's 2019, so this building's like 100 years old, right? Now, what I see a lot of times with these torch down roofs is people just layer them over and over and over and over and over and over. They just keep putting tar over and over and over. Eventually, you get to the point where you can no longer do that because the roof itself is, is too heavy for the building. Now, per what these guys are talking about in their scope of work, you already have some structural issues. We got sagging floor joists. Uh, broken floor joists, shit like that, right? I don't know if it's because the roof is already too heavy. I'm not sure, right? I haven't been on site, but that is like a pretty big red flag to me. Like, do they just want to continue to put more stuff on top of that roof? Because I would guesstimate, right, that nobody has actually fully ripped off that roof and totally replaced it up till now. So you probably have like a hundred year roof and based on how fucked up the rest of the building is, you, you know, like the building itself, right? It's just in, in terrible condition. I, I would not anticipate anybody actually spent all the time and effort to actually totally replace that roof, right? So I think you got a hundred year old roof here. With all the structural issues you have, I don't think you can continue doing that. I think it's very important for you uh, to just start over, start fresh, start clean with that roof. Now that's a big roof. That's probably gonna be, if I had to guesstimate, I would say that's probably a twenty-five to $35,000 roof. Don't quote me. Maybe you want to get a quote from these guys. Uh, but I think that's something that should be addressed. Now, the purchase price uh, at $229.9, I think it's a fair price. Uh, I do. I think, I think it's a pretty fair price per unit. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's a good idea uh, to just continue with the old roof. I think you should replace that roof. Now, whether they do it for you at their cost and, and essentially sell you the building at $229.9 with a new $35,000 roof, I, I think that's probably not a good deal for them. I think they could probably get a better deal. Um, so, you know, maybe you pay them, maybe you guys split the cost of the roof, right? Maybe you pay instead of $229.9, maybe you pay like $240 with a brand new roof. But I, I think you want to get a new roof. I think that's the route you want to go. Another product that's nice is Sherwin-Williams has a coating that you can put over these roofs. You do some prep work on the roof, and then you pour this stuff on it, and it's supposed to have a lifetime warranty. It's a pretty new product. We've used it, and so far we've had great success with it. But I'm leery about you doing it on this property, though, just because, like, they've spoken so much about structural issues, walls leaning, posts not being supported. And I know that a lot of owners just keep going layer after layer after layer on these torched down roofs. And, you know, again, the building is fucked up right now, right? I'm, I'm assuming it's a 100-year-old roof. So I really don't want to see you do that here. So I think we got to handle that elephant in the room, which is that, you know, $25,000, $35,000 roof. And I think it would probably be fair, uh, you know, if either you come up with about half and they come up with about half. That seems to be pretty fair. Other than that, though, I, I, I like their general uh, plan for everything else. I think everything else is a, a pretty solid and smart plan. And they actually uh, went so far as to send you a ton of stuff. Um, here's a little video that uh, they sent you via Dropbox. And I was watching a little bit of it before I started doing the analysis. Let's just watch through it together. Just these guys going in the property, right? This is your basement. It looks kind of like a dungeon, but that's pretty par, par for the course. But right here, man, look at these. Four beautiful brand new furnaces. That's great. And they got all brand new ductwork there for you too. Because I'm assuming with the building this old, there's probably asbestos wrapped uh, ductwork. So looks like they went all new ductwork. Oh, there's some of the old ductwork right there in the corner of the screen. And then the guy cruises over here to the other side of the basement. And then you have your other four 
brand new furnaces. So that's like a huge undertaking, right? Furnaces are gonna be about three G's to replace. You got eight of them in this property. These furnaces are gonna last you about 30 years. So that's really good. It's really cool that they sent you this video, right? These guys are just being very stand up, very transparent about what they're doing. You know, they're saying, hey man, this is the building. It's fucked up. This is what we're gonna do to fix it. And they're being as transparent as they possibly can uh, about it with sending you stuff like this. So you can check out the units, see what they're doing. I, I like it, man, this is great. They're even uh, totally replacing the floor in here, right? These guys, you know, they're doing some pretty solid stuff for you here. I, uh, I gotta say, I am impressed. You know, I, I see a lot of companies coming and going out of this market. And uh, again, this is the first time I've ever heard of these guys. But I, I like what they're doing. I think these guys are pretty solid operators. I think they've shot you very fair estimates, very fair price. Uh, I kind of like the location of the building. You know, if you're going for that D-class stuff, I think this is the best D-class neighborhood. You know, I, I like the transparency out of these guys. So this is all pretty good. Let's just kind of skip ahead. Just more, more of their project here. Some of their crew working in there. So right here, you know, totally gutted out kitchen. So they're doing a lot of work for you here. Let's see what else you provided me. Uh, this was just an exterior video, just the outside. Just a little bit of the neighborhood. This street right here is the main street. This is Denison Avenue. There's your building. Looks like you got the guy up there doing some window work. Okay. And then here you sent me just a bunch of uh, pictures. That's this is just uh, this is one of their guys talking about some stuff in the basement here. And then uh, just like you when you guys saw Soika, all the wet areas, bathrooms, kitchens, they'll all be floored exactly the same. Yeah. And on Soika, you'll have you seen the Soika, you'll have agreeable gray everywhere. I know it sounds kind of weird, but this building's called the Rose. You know, yeah. and that's what it's called the Rose. If you look up top, yeah. Okay, so he's talking about just putting the same flooring in the kitchens and baths. That's very smart. I assume they're probably going to do like a vinyl flooring. Again, I love the fact they put in all brand new furnaces and they use agreeable gray, which is the same thing we use. Uh, last bit of content that you sent me from them. Just some photos. One of their one of their workers looks like their electrician. You got all your gas meters here. Just these guys, just super transparent, right? I, that's what I really like about this company. Just a lot of transparency. Here is some stuff on the roof. Can I make this bigger? Now it's like a pit in your roof, so you got a lot of uh, puddling in your roof. Um, that's pretty common for these flat roofs. You got some water coming into their basement. Uh, I assume they're probably going to correct that. I would not anticipate that you're going to get a completely dry basement here. Uh, just so you know, the, the basements in Cleveland, like for this old ass property like this, like it's not going to be living area. Like you could never actually put an apartment down there. So tenants don't consider it to be living. Um, so you don't want it to be like full on standing water, but you're probably always going to see some moisture. Uh, so just simple stuff could be some dry locking and then putting some uh, dehumidifiers down there. That is something you probably want to do. Just more and more photos uh, of their team fixing everything for you. Just, just being as transparent as they can, showing you everything that they're doing. So moral of the story is everything I'm seeing so far is James Wise approved. I think this is a solid deal. Again, I see upside on the rents. Uh, remember the taxes, those should double. But again, I see huge upside on the rents. I think Section 8's the way you want to go with this. As far as your seller, um, these guys, they seem totally legitimate to me uh, from just learning about them through you. I, I like everything they're doing. I thought they were very uh, transparent and everything was very accurate. The only thing that I'd be slightly concerned about would be the cost of that roof. You know, I sold a building for... I think it was 
31,000. It's very close to this neighborhood as well. It's maybe another five minute drive. Uh, that one was in old Brooklyn, eight units. Uh, very, very similar. I sold that for 231 and it, it had a pretty rough roof. Not as bad as what I think your roof is. I think your roof is probably worse given that you have structural issues. And in that building, I had uh, larger units. Uh, so we had more one bedroom and two bedroom units. We didn't have four studios in there. Uh, and arguably, I think the neighborhood was a slight notch above this. And that one, again, I went for 231. Um, so for this one, I don't think you should deserve a $35,000 credit off this. I don't, like, I don't think they would have any issue selling it with everything they're planning on doing with the old roof uh, for much more than 195. I think they'll definitely get one more than 195. But I think that's a nice point of negotiation. You might want to try to negotiate in there because I'm thinking you're looking at, again, 25, 35K for the cost of that roof. Uh, so more or less, though, outside of that little detail that you should negotiate with these dudes, I like the deal. It's James Wise approved, and I, I like your sellers. I think they're being very upfront with you. Um, so, Dave, I hope that answered all your questions. I hope you're a little bit more comfortable moving forward with this deal. And uh, if you'd like Holton Wise to take over the management for you, once these guys are done with their renovation and they put all those tenants in there for you and you want Holton Wise to take this over as your property manager, we would have no problem doing that. We have hundreds of assets in this neighborhood. So uh, you can go back to our fact for information on our pricing for that. So yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I got. That's, that's, that's everything I could think of to discuss with you on this building. Uh, so yeah, man, James Wise approved. Just talk to your seller, see what you guys can work out with that roof. I, th I think the roof's pretty important. Uh, other than that, though, uh, you know, solid deal. James Wise approved. Uh, for everybody else that's watching this video, if this is one of the first videos you've ever seen from me, again, you go to HoltonWise.com. This is the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I will analyze any deal in the Cleveland market for you. On top of that, I'm the number one seller of rental properties in Cleveland, so make sure you smash the subscribe button and I will send out an investment property for sale to you every single day at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Or again, if you found it somewhere else and you want me to give you the rundown on it, as a guy who runs a $50 million portfolio out here in Cleveland, I've got my eyes on the ground. I know what's going on and I will shoot you straight. Right? I'm not getting a commission if Dave buys this uh, rental property. I've never even heard of these sellers until Dave brought them to my attention. So it's just pure unbiased advice. Uh, if you did find something on the MLS and you want my team to operate as your buyer broker, we will do that for you, but only after you purchase an analysis. We do not work in a buyer's agent capacity for anybody unless we've analyzed that property first because we only work with investors and there's a lot of stuff we got to get through. Uh, so we need to make sure that we get you all that information to know exactly what you want to do. Because like this property right here, man, this is a, a beat up property in a D-class area. Um, but I still think it's got a lot of opportunity. And I love the fact that those sellers wanted to present the most accurate uh, picture to Dave as possible. Sometimes when I run these analysis for folks, you know, we got wholesalers trying to do shady stuff. Like I analyzed the property for someone. I'll, I'll, put, the, uh, I'll put a link to that video in the show notes as well. Uh, more or less a wholesaler, he used funky comps on, on his uh, performer that he sent to one of my clients. I think that was one of my clients who's out in Australia. And more or less, if my client would have moved forward with that deal, the way the wholesaler presented it to him, my client would have lost $87,000. Uh, so sometimes these sellers can be as big of a red flag as the property itself. Not the case here though. So once again, this property is James Wise approved. And I'm going to remind you one more time, if you're a new viewer or if you're a long time viewer, smash the like, subscribe, or share button. Show a friend. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied.
Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video just like this one to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.